WVUAFM, Tuscaloosa. Hello, everybody. This is WVUA 90.7 FM, the Capstone, and welcome to the first ever Monday show and episode number 21 of the Full Court Press Podcast. My name is Jamie Martinez, and I'm joined by Alex Chasen and Nick Atkinson. On today's episode, look forward to our current shooting guard tier list and just some fun little random basketball talk we have for you guys today. Make sure to follow us on Instagram at FCP Podcast underscore UA and on TikTok at FCP underscore podcast. With that being said, let's get into it. Let's get right into it. First of all, how was the live show? I thought it went really well. Sensational. It It was sensational, as Future would say. I thought it was amazing. It was a lot of fun. Mm-hmm. We would love to do it again on another big occasion with NBA news or whatever's going on in the NBA <laughs> war. But with that being said, let's jump into some a little bit of news. I mean, we covered most of it on the live show. Hasn't been much since. But Patrick Beverly, I think on the live show, we discussed how he was going to get traded to the Timberwolves. Yeah. I, f- I forget where I saw that, but that information, I guess, was wrong. Patrick Beverly is most Ooh. likely going to be way, way from the Orlando Magic, and he can sign wherever he wishes. Where would you like to see Pat Bev? Minnesota. Probably Minnesota, yeah. honestly, yeah. Yeah, that's probably where he probably end up. I feel like that's a good fit for him. He liked it there. I mean, when they won the play-in game, they acted like they won the, the NBA championship. Finals, so mm-hmm. it wouldn't be a bad fit. Some other news, NBA All-Star <laughs> news. Jamie, you're going to like this one. There's been some guys hurt. Toronto Raptors, Pascal Siakam, Sacramento's De'Aaron Fox, Woo! Minnesota's Anthony Edwards are expected to be named the three All-Star reserves replacing Kevin Durant. Zion Williamson and Stephen Curry. Jamie, how do you feel about this for De'Aaron Fox especially, but overall for the other two guys? Yeah, so first I'll just cover Anthony Edwards and Pascal Siakam. Uh, Minnesota's Anthony Edwards. Uh, he was definitely deserving of a spot. I don't think he deserved one over De'Aaron, but he was definitely deserving of a spot. I think I'd put him over Jaron or Dame. But uh, it's cool to see the young guy get his first All-Star. As for Siakam, I think this is his second All-Star appearance, but he deserved it from the get-go. He's averaging like 26 a game with uh, great, great efficiency. And then De'Aaron Fox, that's that's my guy. He should have been an all-star a very long time ago. Honestly, this should be his third all-star. But, uh, you know, the NBA hates the Kings, so it's it's great to see De'Aaron Fox finally get the recognition he deserves, and I'm sure he's going to go ball out in the all-star game. 100%. How about you, Nick? How do you feel about these three? Yeah, I couldn't say any better than what he said about De'Aaron. Uh... For Ant, though, I definitely think that I like to see him there. I like to see people that are getting that are getting their first All Star appearance. So I'm happy that it's somebody like that rather than you know somebody else that's on a big market team. I can, I can like James Harden. That. Yeah, I can attest to that one. Some just interesting stuff I want to talk about here. The NBA betting odds have changed <clears> since <throat> obviously the trade deadline. That everyone has been moved around. I know you guys have this in front of you, but if you could just turn it off, don't look, don't look. Oh, well, you guys already look. <clears throat> Okay, well, who has the best odds? The Celtics have the best odds still to win the NBA Finals. The surprising team that has moved up are the Suns. They have moved to plus 500, so they're in wow. third place now. I don't know where they were previously, but I know they definitely fell off a bit. And then we got the Nuggets, Clippers, Sixers. Warriors are plus 1,600. That's insane. So they're only in six, you know, the prediction-wise. But the Celtics are still atop of this. Any surprises, though, that if people have moved up? Or do you think that could have moved down? Obviously, don't, we don't really know what it looked like before because we're not really big into betting. But just some sp- surprising teams you see here. I don't know why Memphis is so low. I mean, under Golden State, under the Clippers, um, you know, they're plus 1,800. I definitely think that should be higher. Along with the Mavericks at plus 2,100. I just think the Warriors are too overrated. The Lakers at plus 5,500 over teams like the Pelicans, Heat, Kings, Nets. Yeah, Knicks. The Kings at thirteen hundred. Yeah, Kings at thirteen thousand. Thirteen thousand. Yeah, uh, under crazy. the Hawks, and he is kind of crazy to me for the third seed in the West. Uh, so yeah, these are kind of whack to me. I don't know why the Pacers are at plus fifty thousand too. The same as the Magic, and like the Pistons. I think they should be at like forty nine thousand with the Jazz. So I mean, yeah, this is kind of whack. Yeah, it's just some interesting stuff I wanted to throw in here for today's show. I don't know. It's just after the traded line, obviously all the bets have gone in different directions, so I just wanted to throw that in there. Jason Tatum becomes the first <clears throat> player in NBA history, yes, the first player in NBA history to make 1,000 three-pointers before his 25th birthday. He's going to get the LeBron record. Well, no, he's not. No, he's not. No, he's a better shooter than Steph Curry, though. No, he only got it because he started playing when he was 19, and he's still 19. So, so same with well, no. Steph Curry, if he was playing at his pace by the time he was drafted, he'd be at like 2003 by his 25th birthday. 
I don't know. But anyways, he's the youngest player in NBA history to hit 1,000 three-pointers before the age of 25. Good job, JT. Keep killing it. You killed the Hornets last night. Let's keep it going. The Thunder have five players with five or more 40-point games in a season. Kevin Durant, Russell Westbrook, Paul George, and now Shea Gilgis Alexander. Last night he had a fantastic game for the Thunder. They carried them back from they scored thirty to nine points. Like they scored thirty points. They only let the who are they playing? I'm having a blank right now. We literally watched them. Yeah, we watched it. Was it the rap? No, it wasn't the Raptors. Because uh, we saw the Raptors beat up another team. Blazers, Trailblazers. Yeah, the Trailblazers. They only they only let them score nine points and the Thunder scored thirty and that was with help with Shea Gilders Alexander who now is up there with Kevin Durant, Russell Westbrook, and Paul George as the big Russell Westbrook fan, Nick. How do you feel about Shea getting, getting talked about with these other three Thunder greats? Uh, I mean, it's pretty good. He's a good scorer, so, yeah, I respect it. Yeah, I mean, SGA, uh, he, he's been great, really, his whole career, but he, he really emerged this season, and it's really cool to see it, um, to be up there with the likes of KD, Russell Westbrook, and an MVP candidate for the time of Paul George. Uh, this is elite company for Shea Gildas Alexander, and he's really putting up a little bit of a historic season. Definitely. He'll definitely keep this going for years and years to come. A new segment we're going to add probably to the Monday shows. Maybe not everyone, but definitely every other, and possibly everyone. We ask you. So on our Instagram, Jamie shouted it out at the beginning. I'll shout it again right now. FCP Podcast underscore UA. We ask you on our Instagram stories. We have some four questions that we asked the listeners, and you guys answered just with relevant news going on. Let's start it off with out of the former Nets big three, that being KD, Kyrie, and Harden, who is now in the best position to win a championship? You guys answered 43% to Kevin Durant. Another 43, 43% to Harden, and only 14% to Kyrie. Out of us three, what are you guys, what are you guys thinking? I, I think I was the one that picked Kyrie here, only because I've seen him play in the last two games. He didn't have Luka yesterday. He didn't have Luka the game before. And offensively, they look as fluid as ever. Um, even defensively, they held the Kings to only 114 last night. In the fourth quarter, they scored 45, just destroyed us. Uh, in the first, yeah, in the, in, without Luka. And then held us to 114 overall, so... Uh, when they bring Luka back, this is going to be one of the most uh, deadly offenses I think we've ever seen. So i, I got to give it to Kyrie. Uh, <clears throat> i definitely pick Harden. Uh, just because of the Sixers, we have the best 1-13 to 13 in the league probably. We just have so much depth, so much shooting, so that's why I picked them. I feel like KD, it's kind of like just too much at the top, so that's why I didn't even pick him. And then Kyrie, I think this is a one-year rental. I don't think they're going to be able to build up enough chemistry to be able to be a championship team. I agree. I also picked James Harden as well. And that's going from a Celtics fan. I just think the mo- most realistic guy of these three is James Harden. Kevin Durant and the Phoenix Suns, I think it's going to be a struggle, especially with KD being out probably another two weeks, if not a month. And so they're not going to have a lot of time to really get things going together. Kyrie... I think he's only going to be there for the next three months, and then whenever they get knocked out of the playoffs, he's not coming back. That's just my opinion based off how Kyrie operates. And then Harden, he's got the most secure team with the best depth and already an established team in the league, so that's why I chose that. Jumping into the next one, how are you feeling about this trade, the trade being the Kyrie Irving trade to the Mavericks? The, resp- um, the questions were, Kyrie and Luka will be so dominant, that was 33%. Nets don't get back enough in return, that's 33%. Both teams win, well, no one answered that one. And neither team wins, that's another 33% as well. So, split across the board. What do you guys takes? Yeah, so I, I got Kyrie and Luka will be so dominant, I, I just stated it. They looked so fluid last night against Sacramento, a team that's all right defensively and superior offensively, and they kind of just killed us the entire game. So I got to give it to to the Mavericks. Shout out Mark Cuban for making a fantastic trade, and I think the Mavericks will be pretty good if they can get that chemistry going. Yeah, uh, I think I did. Nets didn't get enough in return. Uh, they, I mean, I just think Dorian Finney-Smith and Spencer Dimity. That's a pretty good. <clears throat> How many first round picks do they get? Was it one or two, four, four three, three four, five, yeah. seven? I don't know. No, no, three or four, I think. Yeah, I mean, I still just think that they could have gotten a little bit more. Maybe Jaden, maybe they should have tried to get Jaden Hardy or just some younger players. <clears throat> so I just think that they should have tried to get a little bit more out of them, especially how, considering how much they got out of KD. I feel like they could have gotten a similar yeah. package out of Kyrie. I'd say the Nets don't get back and nothing return. I agree with that one as well. I was leaning towards neither team wins when the trade happened, but then looking at it, the Nets 1-13, to 13, 
not as top heavy and good. Well, the 76ers aren't top heavy, but they, obviously the Nets don't have someone like Joel Embiid or Harden. But I think the one to thirteen is also really good when you're talking about a one to thirteen lineup with the Brooklyn Nets now. Like they really have no holes except they don't have a superstar, but they have great Cam good, Thomas good on the players. rise. Maybe we shall see. The next question here. This was after LeBron obviously got the scoring record. It's LeBron. Is LeBron? I just realized I put a spelling error in that question. Is LeBron the greatest basketball player of all time? 40% say yes without a doubt. 47% say no. That's Jordan still. Smart and people. And 13% say LeBron is the boat, that being the best of all time. And MJ is the go. We don't need to get into this argument because we'll be here for longer than we need to be because we'll take up the whole show just debating this. But the, most people still think no. Jordan is still the go. And LeBron's just right behind at 40% with yes without a doubt. And 13% say LeBron's the best basketball player of all time, but Jordan is the GOAT. I definitely voted for that one there. So we don't need to get into it we'll here <laughs> all day. So we're going to go on to the next one. Shout out the 47%. Was, was this the wildest trade deadline ever? And a whopping 100% of voters said agree. It is. I think that's an easy, easy yes. I haven't. I don't remember a trade deadline like this ever. It just was nonstop trade after trade after trade. Me and Alex were in math class, and about <laughs> yeah. the twenty, the first twenty minutes of class, nothing happened. And in the last 40, 40 minutes to an, uh, to like fifty, it was just nonstop, nonstop. never stopping trade after trade. Refresh, uh, refresh, refresh. Yep, big trades, little trades, and then before that, we had Kyrie, KD, uh, Jakob Pertl, all these other trades. So I think easily with just the amount of super. Superstars traded, the amount of depth that was traded, and the whole, the entire quantity of how many trades happened. This is easily the wildest trade deadline of all time. Yeah, I, I would agree. agree. <clears throat> Definitely top two and probably number one. But are we ready to get into our shooting guard tier list? Let's get it. All right, Nick, let's start off with D tier. D tier being guys who shouldn't really start in the NBA. <clears throat> and again, we did this last time with point guards. We're going to do this with every tier list. Um, these are guys who start as shooting guard and also just good, valuable backups at the shooting guard position as well because we just didn't want to not name some guys. But anyways, let's get started with Nick. Uh, uh, starting on D, Quentin Grimes, Nimhard, Seth Curry, Gary Harris. I did move Terrence Mann. I think he's just – I really do like him. I think he's more of a backup shooting guard, you know, like an eighth man on a rotation. Uh, Gary – Grayson Allen and I got Alec Burks. Grayson Allen. That's a little I think, disrespectful. He's a good, I think he's a good defender, <clears throat> but I think he just plays his role. I don't think he's I think on any other team I don't think he's a starting a starting level shooting guard. But he's on a really good team and he's a starting level. Yeah, well I think that's because of the fit. He's a good defender. He put, he can shoot threes. He uh sets Giannis up really well for like the driving kicks and just he plays really well with the team. Yeah. My D tier, Quentin Grimes, Andrew Nimhard, Seth Curry, I moved down to D tier. I think he's a six man. I don't think he's a starter in the NBA. Gary Harris, I think another guy who's a valuable six man. And also Terrence Mann as well. <coughs> I just don't think any of those guys really should be stars in the NBA. If they are, I think it's that they're on a really good team and they can just play their role like a Seth Curry or a Terrence Mann. But other than that, they should just be valuable six mans in the league. All right, so for my D tier, I have Quentin Grimes, Andrew Nemhard, Seth Curry, Gary Harris, and I know my list doesn't show up, but I'm going to move Alec Burks down uh, just because the Pistons aren't winning very many games and Alec Burks isn't really that quintessential piece of the Pistons. So I'm going to just move him down to the D tier. Um, But other than that, I don't really think anything's that, you know, that that crazy to say. I think those are pretty D tier guys. I think if I were to move anybody up, it could be Seth Curry just because of what he's done his, in his career. But I mean, as of right now, I just I just can't see it. Yeah. Moving on to C. These are like the six man type of guys. Uh, starting off with Victor Oladipo, Gary Trent Jr., who I thought was going to be traded, D'Anthony Mountain, Jordan Clarkson, Eric Gordon, who did get traded, Jalen Suggs, Bones Highland. What's his name? Which one? Trey Murphy? I'll, I'll, go, I'll go back to him. Yeah, Trey, Trey Murphy. Trey Murphy Jr. No, no, I know Trey Murphy. Uh, Josh Richardson. Emmanuel Quickly? And, yeah, Quickly. Quickly and Cam Thomas. I do, Cam I, Thomas? I can see Cam Thomas being moved up to, uh, to B, but I just, I'm not, I don't fall victim to recency bias. I agree, you, you know I, agree, what I'm I agree with you. I do. My C tier is VO, Gary Trent Jr., Anthony Mellon, Eric Gordon, Jalen Suggs, Bones Highland as well. And that's because he's averaging 12 points a game. He's actually not averaging 18. I know we've said that before. He was at the beginning of the season, but recently looking at the stats, he's now averaging only 12 points a game. He's not a starter in the NBA right now. He's really not. Jimmy's not. He will be. Just yeah, watch. But it's not about that. 
Oh, but I'm about that. I'm on that bone tire type of train. I've seen what he's been able to do no, skill wise. He's not getting enough time on the Nuggets, and now he's going to get that time on the Clippers. Done, and he's Just only you wait. Points a game. Just he's you not, wait. Yeah, but you can't put him in. Beat. Go ahead, keep going. All right. And then I have Emmanuel Quickly, Grayson Allen, who's a good starting you know, shooting guard, Trey Murphy Jr., Josh Richardson, who I really like. Alec Burks, I mean, he's playing his role really well. He's a starting shooting guard on the Pistons, who are bad, but he's 31, 32 years old. He could be moved anywhere. I mean, he's, he's playing his role on this Pistons roster. And then also Cam Thomas as well, because, again, he, yes, he's had 40, 44, 47, 42, I believe. Then he had 20 points per. Then he had 20 points in the following game. He's a terrific scorer. He's really good. Don't get me wrong, but it's been four games. i got to see what he does <clears throat> in a longer span, because on the season he's still only, only averaging 10 points a game, and that's not a starting level player. So i got to see what he does in the long run. But right now, he still seats here like, like Nick. I'm not going to fall to what's happening right now. i got to see consistency and longevity over... Give me like six months of that. Not even 40 points a game. That's ridiculous. But give me like 25 points per game, 20 points per game over like six months or a season. You'll get moved up. But right now, I can't do it. All right. <clears throat> so for uh, my seats here, guys, I have Old Man, Victor Oladipo, Terrence Mann, Emmanuel Quickly, Gary Trent, uh, my least favorite player who used to be my favorite player, Buddy Heald, Grayson Allen, uh, DeAnthony Melton, Trey Murphy, Eric Gordon, Josh Richardson, Jalen Suggs, and no longer Alec Burks because I moved him down. That's disrespectful. To who? Um, what's his name? I just did. I just, oh, Buddy Heald. Because I was looking at mine. I was like, he's not in my seat. So I was like, where'd he go? But yeah, that's disrespectful. I know you don't like him, but tell me why. For what he did to the Sacramento Kings. Uh, yeah, like playing well. How does he deserve a CT? He's just so inefficient. He shoots so many threes. And, you know, he'll make a few. But, like, his percentage is not that good. In Sacramento, he was okay, averaging 20 a game one year. But over time, he just consistently kept dropping and dropping and dropping. His job's going to get taken by Benedict Matherin if it hasn't already. So, um, I think it's move, move me, B Math to the three. Nah, he math to the two. Eight. No way. He's six eight. I'm moving him to the two, but I just don't like Buddy Heal that much anymore. Efficiency wise, he just shoots a lot of threes, makes a few, but misses a lot more. So I kind of noticed a trend a little bit in my B tier at least. It's a lot of like shooters, catching shooters. So starting off, I got Clay Thompson. Oh, can I ask you a question real quick? Sorry, I forgot to ask this. Why do you have Jordan Clarkson in C tier? That's Why disrespectful. Oh yeah, too. that's disrespectful. I, I, just, that. I don't know. I mean, especially right now, he's just really not popping off to me at least. I mean, I know he's doing good, but I mean, he's also on a bad team, you know. I think if he's on a good team as a six man, I think he's probably a candidate for the six man of the year always. I think that's always what his role is going to be for the rest of his career. But I just don't, as of right now, I just think he fits being one of the best backup uh, players in the league. I think he's still a starting shooting guard in the NBA. Oh, I think he is that level, but I think that he's more of like a Jordan uh, Jamal Crawford type of person. He's going to flourish. And Jordan, I mean, Jamal Crawford, where would we put him at his peak? Where would you put him? Well, that, in my opinion, that's the second best six man of all time. So I would put him in like prime Jamal Crawford in A. So that, so Jordan Clarkson should be P because he's a step behind him. Yeah, but like Jamal Crawford was averaging like a good twenty something off the bench. Yeah. All right, sorry, you can go ahead. I was just, I just yeah, that's all good. That. All good. Okay, so uh, I'll I'll just start from the beginning. Clay Thompson, Tyler Hero, Josh Giddy, Buddy Heald, Contavious Caldwell Pope, Jordan Poole. Mm. Kevon Herter, Malik Beasley, Simons, Terry Rozier, and yeah, that does it. Why do you have Poole and Rozier in B? That's my main question. Just because those are two guys that I feel like you could be a toss up. Oh, you, also, you said Clay, Clay Thompson as well. Why Clay? Yeah, those three. Because give me the reason. To me, B, that's all star players. A is superstars. So. What's well, S? Oh, yeah, that's what I meant to say. My bad. <laughs> a, a is. All stars, yeah. S is superstars. Yeah. So B is like a tier below that. Yeah, it's like you know you're just you're starting shooting guards. You know okay. you're fringe all star type of guys. But uh, Jordan Poole to me, I think that he's a good shooter. I think he does nothing else but pure offense. And yeah. uh, so for the <clears throat> lack of defense, that inconsistency that he has, that automatically just buzz, pulls him down to B for me. Terry Rozier. Thing about him is he's on a bad team like he is. So I just. I don't know how much I value that. I, I do really like Terry Rozier. I just can't have him in this all-star conversation with these guys I have above him. That's a fair argument. My B tier is Jalen Green, Buddy Heal, Tyler Hero, Josh Giddy, KCP, Jordan Clarkson. I'm going to give him his respect. Kevin Herter and Malik Beasley. Any uh, arguments on those? No? 
I feel like I just couldn't put Jalen Green up there yet. I mean, he just hasn't really deserved that, in my opinion. And then, obviously, as you can tell, I do have Poole and Terry above that, and Clay, but we'll get into that in the next Around the Horn. All right, Jamie. All right, so for my B tier, I have Jalen Green, which I almost debated putting an A, but I, I did some digging into his stats. And uh, a lot for the reason why I bumped down Buddy Heald is that efficiency. He's just not for – for a guard, he's just shooting a lot. He's shooting – almost eight threes a game, making under three, uh, shooting 41% from the field and 33% from three. So he's averaging 22 a game. If he can bump that efficiency up, he could definitely be an A-tier guard. But uh, as of right now, I'm going to have him B. So, you know, I'm going to show respect to my, in my heart, top five shooting guard, Jalen Green. Uh, next, I have Terry Rogier for the same reasons as Nick. Um, Tyler Hero, Josh Giddy, KCP, my, my boy Jordan Clarkson, my ginger boy, Kevin Herter, Malik Beasley, Bones Highland, and then I did fall to the recency bias of, uh, bias of Cam Thomas. Um, I just really like what he's doing over the last few games, and I think um, as the season progresses, without KD, without Kyrie, he has a much, much better chance to get those numbers up. So, um, I mean, he's balling without the two, so I had to give him his respect. Bones Highland and Cam. I think Bone High, Bones Highland and B is kind of insane. Yeah, I could, I could kind of understand Cam because he's killing it right now, but not re- I mean, uh, you're just recency biased, as Nick mentioned. Bones Highland is crazy. He hasn't done anything to prove that he's a B tier. And you, you can this, prove it. This is, you, this is not about future. He's averaging 12 points a game. I know, you just got to give him a chance. He, that's he, not what it's about. When he does start, he averages a, like a great efficiency in points. He's, well, who, who else is going to be? I mean, there's a buyout coming. So. Okay, okay. Stop. Russ? <laughs> Without he's Russ, he's going to start. He's definitely going there. That's like... Well, he's going to the Bulls. Certain. Watch. Paul George. I will say, in 2K, I was doing a rebuild, and I didn't touch anything, and Russell Westbrook got bought out by the Jazz, or just released, <laughs> and he signed with the Clippers. And in 2K, did that. We so, don't got to believe the simulation's 2K. real. Jason Preston fake. also changed his number from 0 to 17, so... Uh, 2K also has Luka Doncic winning MVP like 10 consecutive years, so I wouldn't call it that realistic. But yeah, that's, that's the beats here, guys. All right, let's go cool. jump to A. A. Before Desmond Bain got injured, he was an all-star. That was like bound to happen, so I do have him in A. I wanted to move Zach Levine down to B because he's just not being impressive this season. He's being very, very inefficient. The Bulls want to move on from him, but I'm going to keep him in A because he's still all-star level talent. DeJounte Murray, Ant Edwards, and Bradley Beal. Okay, my A tier is Anthony Simons. I think he's deserved that low end A. He's not an All Star yet, but he's not as, but he's not like a B where they're not All Stars at all. A tier, I feel like you could put some low level, soon to be All Stars. Yeah. So I got Anthony Simons, Desmond Bain as well. I completely agree. Before the injury, he was bound to be an All Star, bound to be a shooting guard, getting that, and getting his All Star selection. Not now, obviously, but Clay Thompson, who's again on that lower level of A, he's still a star, not quite an All Star anymore. Anthony Edwards, of course, who had his first All Star nod. Bradley Beal, Zach Levine, Dejounte Murray, Jordan Poole, I think. And then Terry Rozier. I think those two, Jordan Poole and Terry Rozier, if there's ever an argument for B, Nick made a perfect argument earlier in the podcast, so I like that argument. I did have both of them in B, but then I moved them both up to A. Because, again, they're on that lower level. They're not all-stars. They might not be all-stars, but I think there's better than all the other B guys that I just have. They're closer to the A than they are to B, in my opinion. So that's why I put them in A. But they're like an A-minus versus an A, A A-plus range, in my opinion. All right. So for my A-tier guys... I have future all-star Anthony Simons, Desmond Bain, who was on track to be an all-star this year. He was averaging like 28 a game before the injury. Klay Thompson, he, without Steph Curry, has been absolutely on fire as of late. He had 12 threes in a game just a few games ago. Um, Anthony Edwards, uh, first-time all-star this season. Congratulations to him. Bradley Beal. Of course, one of the best scorers consistently over the league in the last probably six, seven years. Zach Levine, former All-Star. He's been keeping up at his pace for a long time. And, um, you know, I think if the Bulls can get some help for him, I, I think that consistency can, you know, stay put. Hopefully Lonzo Ball can come back and keep the Bulls afloat. DeJounte Murray, the triple-double machine, defensive monster, and Atlanta's probably best card. So um, I'm a big fan of DeJounte Murray. And then Jordan Poole, I have him in the A tier because even though he's not crazy efficient, he has shown time in and time out that he can win the Warriors games without Stephen Curry, and he could definitely replace him down in the future. So I had to put Jordan Poole there. uh, i got to give him his flowers. 
Not, not a bad A tier. And then moving on to S tier, I think... This is easy. Let me check. I think we all have the same. All right, so Nick, you just say the three. We all have the same. And then we'll just change it up a little bit. Let's just rank them. I know that's not what it's about. Oh, rank them after we get done saying it. Well, after you say the top three guys here that we all have an S tier, we'll go around and rank them and just create a little bit of a debate. If there is a debate, there might not be. Maybe there is. I don't know. But just to create a little more of a discussion instead of just going... Him, him, him. So let's get it rolling. Jalen Brown, Devin Booker, and Devon, Devon, uh, Donovan Mitchell. <laughs> Damn right. So we all have JB, Book, and Donovan. Let's Now let's rank them, Nick. What do you think? One is Jalen Brown. I don't, I don't, bro, I don't care, bro. He'll be doing the same thing. He will be doing the same thing Donovan Mitchell's doing with better defense. That, and, and that's just, I think that's kind of crazy to not think that. Uh, Donovan Mitchell at two, Devin Booker at three. I'm going to have to – I love what you're saying, and, and I can agree, but he's not on the Cavs. So I'm going to have to go – because he is Robin right now. A very good Robin. He's closer to Batman than Robin, but he is Robin. So I'm going to have to go with Donovan Mitchell, JB, and D-Book. You're up, Jamie. This is tough. I feel like Donovan Mitchell is the unanimous number one here. Um, well, except for Nick, obviously. It is close. I mean, it is closer. He, I, JB is closer than, to Donovan than Book is closer to JB. I don't know He's about only that. Point four less points than him. Than who? Than Donovan Mitchell. Donovan Mitchell scored seventy one. Uh, so I'm gonna go like Donovan JB Mitchell. Do thing I know time Not with that slow jump shot. He he has a hitch at a jump shot. He like keeps no, it up there for a second. No, he doesn't. Tatum has a, has a smooth jump shot. But I'm going to go Donovan Mitchell 1. Um, I like Booker than a lot more people do, but I'm going to go Jalen Brown 2. Yeah, you probably thought I was going to go Booker 2. I was. Just to create a little bit of just fire in the room, I thought you would. I, I was thinking about it. I really <laughs> do like Devin Booker, and I do think – um, pre-injury, he was overall. up there. But JB has had a fantastic season uh, defensively and offensively, so I have to give him that two spot. And then Booker, I don't agree with the fact that uh, what what you said about how uh, JB is closer JB's to D. Closer Mitch than him. Booker is to JB. I don't agree with that. I think it's a lot closer than you may think. Just because Booker, he's uh, you know they both of them have Finals experience. Booker's carried the Suns for a very 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 long time, so I, I'm gonna give Booker that three spot. But I don't. It, it's pretty close. In my my eyes. But it's definitely those three that are S tier, no brainers. And Easy. last week we did point cards with Luca and Kyrie, so obviously one of them is going to have to play shooting guard, but we're not going to talk about that because we already talked about them last episode. But if you are wondering, obviously I'm assuming Luca will be the shooting guard on the Mavericks. I think it's Kyrie. Kyrie, Kyrie. played shooting guard with the Nets when okay. they ran James Harden at point. So. so just that's why if those names aren't there, that's why we said it. But that is our tier list for shooting guards. Now let's just get into just some fun talk for the rest of the show today. I want to mention this. Everyone saw Mike Muscala was wearing the number 57. Everyone was like, what? Everyone was clowning him on Twitter. The announcers didn't know what was up because you got Blake Griffin, who's most famous for wearing 23. No, 32, and then 23. And then he's wearing 91 now. Like, what's going on? You got Taco Fall wearing 99, started off at J. Carr. They got weird numbers on the Celtics sometimes. Mike Muscala chooses to wear... What people thought the odd number of 57, but it actually has a good meaning. His mom, who recently passed away at the start of the season, was born in 1957, so that's the meaning behind that. So that's a symbolic reason that I like to hear, and hopefully that can bring us a championship in Boston, because that's what it's about. I just want to touch on that real quick. What do you guys think? Because it is an odd number. Obviously not, not much to think, but... I, I mean, mean, yeah, it's it's cool getting to honor your mom like that. Uh, it, it's symbolic, so I can get along with that. I, I have no problem with it exactly. at all. And then I just have something funny to say. My roommate Tommy that we all know, my roommate Tommy. Um, so last night we were watching the Thunder Blazers game, and he put a bet on Josh Giddy, right, to get 33 points, assists, rebounds. Like total, all his stat line equals more than 33 points. 33, you know, the number 33. He was at 32 with like six minutes left. He gets subbed out for Aaron Wiggins, which makes no sense. And then with one minute left, they put Giddy in, and he doesn't get it. And Tommy's just freaking out. I just thought it was funny because he was one away. And he put, like, it was only $25, not a lot. I just thought it was funny. And he was just one away. And he was just screaming at the TV. I don't know, I thought was, was that funny. after we left? Yeah, that was after. Dang. Tommy and I were sitting out there on the couch. Not together. I was on the uh, chair. Um, Bro. And, uh, yeah, we were watching that game. It was a lot of fun. And then I have a Super Bowl bet. I do have a Super Bowl bet. But I want to, before we get into the Super Bowl bet, who do you guys think is going to win the Super Bowl? Uh, as a 49ers fan and a diehard one at that, uh, over the last probably five days or so, all Niners players have had major beef with the Philadelphia Eagles. Uh, our kicker Robbie Gould said Jalen Hurts is overrated and a mediocre quarterback. 
Uh, Debo Samuel uh, was saying stuff about him. Brandon Ayuk said he's going to put every dollar he has on the Chiefs. Um, George Kittle was talking some smack on him. But um, I, I don't like the Eagles at all. The Chiefs already beat us in a Super Bowl. We were up 10 in that game, and we lost. <clears throat> so I have some, some grudge against Patty Mahomes and the Chiefs for that. So in my eyes, I would like for somehow both teams to lose. But if I had the choice, I think I'd probably take Kansas City here. Uh, just keep that legacy of Mahomes going no. and sit down Jalen Hurts. Uh, everyone that Mahomes wins, some, some little kid and some announcer on ESPN is going to be like, oh, he's the GOAT, so I don't want it. I want Mahomes <laughs> to keep losing. I don't want him to you win post, You posted on your Snapchat, keep the legacy going, Patty. No, I no, believe no, no. in you. I said you're next, saying I want to see what you can do, but it doesn't mean I'm rooting for him. Like, if he gets Bro. it, the more he wins, the more I respect him. But I just sound like I want him to start winning, you know what I mean? So that's my take on that. How about you, Nick? I know you're not the biggest football guy in the room, but – if you do have a pick between the Eagles and the Chiefs, who you got tomorrow? And again, this podcast is coming out on Monday, so everyone knows who already won. But just for the sake, who do you think is going to win? Uh, I like the Sixers, so Philadelphia. Okay. Ooh. I, for, I, I thought he was going to say the Sixers were going to win. I was kind of like, what are you talking about? <laughs> but yeah, I got I to go with Kansas City. So this leads us back to me and my bet. I have a $26,000 bet. I did not put $26,000 down. I put $75 down. So don't think I'm crazy. But $75,000 for Juju Smith-Schuster to get the first touchdown, which he's only had three all year. And then I have to get Miles Sanders an anytime touchdown, which seems pretty realistic. Yeah. And then Travis Kelsey two touchdowns the game. So as a big football fan here, Jamie, and I obviously I'm a big, fo- big football guy too, but you know, you're way bigger. What do you think about this? Yeah, so uh, I was talking with him about this a little bit, but uh, I think Miles Sanders could definitely be a hit or miss. Miles Sanders is a uh, Pro Bowl running back. And he's going to get it. The only uh, we always say that, but the like... The question's Juju because, I mean, he deals, he's only scored three touchdowns in the but season. But Philly... There's such a like diverse running game. Boston Scott could go off. Kenneth Gainwell could go off. Jalen Hurts can go off and run for 200 yards. So I wouldn't put anything, everything on Miles Sanders. I definitely think has a higher chance than anybody else, but I wouldn't put all my eggs in one basket. Um, Juju Smith-Schuster is obviously the toughest one for first touchdown. He's only scored three this year. He is their number one receiver, but he's obviously not the most targeted guy. you know. Uh, and then Travis Kelsey, two touchdowns. That's going to be hard. That's going to be tough because he's been in a sort of a slump as of late he started off super hot the first half of the season and in the second half he kind of cooled down touchdown wise uh george kittle started to overtake him shout out george kittle best tight end in the nfl but uh i do think it could happen you know it's the kelsey battle jason kelsey and the eagles versus travis kelsey on the chiefs and i think that patty mahomes is going to try and get travis kelsey to one up his brother and get him those two touchdowns so i could definitely see it happening but juju is the one i'm worried about i think it'll be jarek that's mckinnon the personally the most money because yeah it's, it's, it's the highest the odds highest. i think it'll be jarek mckinnon just because he likes oh, to steal lowest. everybody's touchdowns lowest. but uh, i mean if juju hits that it would be a miracle yeah and shout out jake for helping me pick out these three guys um he's a real one for real for real <sighs> yeah i mean you got any last takes nick yeah, so these Saturdays podcasts are going to come out on Monday. They're a little more short form, a little more fun. Mm-hmm. Uh, and the future ones, I mean, it, we just the uh, trade deadline just happened, so that's all the big news. The All Star break's coming, so that's going to kind of slow down some things. But we'll have obviously some more fun things to talk about in general. <coughs> With that being said, I think that's all we got for today's Monday show. Thank you very much for tuning in, everyone. And Jamie, we've got one more thing. Yeah, so uh, real quick. Me and my boy Drizzy made a rap song oh, yesterday. Yeah. Uh, Alex pitched in with some help. Uh, I just wanted to shout that out real quick. It's called Donuts uh, by Young Plunger featuring Young Jaime on SoundCloud. Go give it a listen. It's uh, my first ever rap song I've ever made, and I think it went pretty hard. Alex pitched in with the ad libs. Um, Driz was producing, and he rapped on it. So y'all got to go give that a listen. Go go run it up on SoundCloud. Uh, Donuts by Young Plunger featuring Young Jaime. And Nick, as a outside reviewer, because you weren't in the song, I was barely in it, but obviously Jamie's in it 100%. Rate it 1 to 10. 10 being like, so first off, 10 being like the best artist you ever know, and 1 being trash. So be real. Booty water. If you're, say, if you're saying the best artist I've ever listened to, then uh. Well, and I wouldn't say best artist you've ever listened to. I would just say like 10 being, you know. Really good. Just a, a great song, yeah. 7. A 7? Yeah, okay. I think the flow is really good. I was telling Jamie this and uh, our friend Drizzy Blake this last night. I 
cannot do things on the fly when it comes to rapping. I can't do it at all. I can't even. I could look at my screen for ten minutes, and I still wouldn't be able to rhyme or really come up with lyrics. I got to give credit to Jamie and Drizzy Blake for being able to do that. They do it so easily. They can do like freestyles, but when they yeah. sit there, they can look at their laptop. They're even making a Tom Brady rap for me. Yeah, we're making know? a Tom Brady rap. That's my guy, and they're doing that for me, which I, I appreciate. But like they can look at a screen for ten minutes and come out, come up with like twenty different lyrics, and it all sounds great with a beat. That's a talent that I don't have, and a lot of people don't have. So I want to give credit to Jamie and Blake on that. So props to you guys. Yeah, I just wanted to give that quick shout out real quick. But with all of that, uh, all of that being said, sorry. Thank you all for tuning in to WVUA ninety point seven and the Full Court Press podcast. We're going to be back Wednesday, pr- uh, predicting our All Star weekend, as well as discussing the most surprising and disappointing players so far this season. Make sure to follow us on Instagram at FCP Podcast underscore UA and on TikTok at FCP underscore podcast. This is Jamie, Alex, and Nick signing out. Peace. See you guys. WVUA FM, Tuscaloosa.